guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And I'm here today to tell you uh, my PMG Red set chase and set break story. Um, I know I've kind of hinted at it and some of you guys who follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, or even have watched the channel know that uh, about nine months ago, I decided to go after this 1997 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gems Red set. So. This is kind of the story of how that began, why it began, um, how long it took. You know, I'm not going to go into any details as far as, uh, you know, profit margin and what I paid and all that stuff. But look, man, comps are comps. If you want to figure it out, you can go find out what cards cost, what cards are worth. Uh, you won't find out what they're sold for because I did a private sale with... Uh, with two individual buyers, but I wanted to kind of share with you guys my story because uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys and you seem to like me just telling you stories of what I'm doing in the hobby and why. And so uh, even without throwing out numbers, uh, this is not a you know deal to beat my chest. This is just to kind of show you how a, a very, very large, uh, well, a few very, very large transactions can take place um, and, and gives you some positive vibes in the hobby that, that you know, sometimes who you know and uh, finding the right buyer means more to getting a transaction done uh, than anything. And win-wins uh, are sometimes the most rewarding and most lucrative for both sides um, deals that you can make in the hobby, even on uh, gigantic cards. So um, this is my story. So I've got, uh, as always, I've got screen share pulled up. And so just to kind of take you guys back, I'm going to switch you over in a second, but just to kind of take you guys back. So this is around maybe September. I owned one 1997 PMG Red. I owned the Shack, and that was the centerpiece of my Shack collection. As you guys know, I have a nice Shack PC. It's okay. Uh, it's probably my third biggest PC, maybe my fourth biggest PC um, after, uh, you know, Jordan, of course, one, LeBron, two, and then Giannis. Probably Shaq's my fourth PC. And then recently, I've added Damian Lillard to that list. So those are the five guys that I collect. But um, it was the centerpiece of my Shaq PC. I, you know, once I finally saw that card, I fell in love with the card. I started paying a little bit more attention to PMG Reds. And um, I thought about buying some of the kind of under the radar Hall of Famers way back in September of 2021, about nine months ago, 10 months ago, something like that. And um, just started paying attention to it. You know, I didn't have a lot of education to it. I went to Trading Card Database. I pulled up the checklist. You know, I jumped on Card Ladder. I ran some comps and I kind of just wanted to understand more about it because this was a direction, um, you know, I was looking to maybe buy a couple bigger ones. And um I'm sorry, I did leave out the fact that I had a Jordan, right? So I, I had the Jordan PMG Red already. So I had the biggest of the big out of the 123 cards. I had the Jordan already uh, and then I had the Shaq. Uh, at no point when I purchased those two cards did I ever think that I would actually chase the set because um, number one, it seemed financially out of reach. Um, and then number two, it just seemed unattainable to be quite honest with you since they're, they're serial numbered to 100 for those of you who don't know the Reds are. The Greens are serial numbered um, to 100 also, but there, there's, well, there's 10 greens and there's 90 reds, but it's serial, the reds are serial numbered to 100, but there's only 90 of them, basically. Um, so I didn't even know if it was even possible. I didn't even know if uh, a set existed anywhere in the world. So I decided to, to kind of look a little bit further into it. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, I saw my good friend Naz on Instagram, a great collector, an amazing follow on Instagram. If you're not following him, you really should just go look up Naz and he'll pull up. Uh, affectionately known as the Candy Man, as he is the uh, one of the co-owners of a candy uh, confectionery uh, up in the great state of Illinois. Um, but uh, he convinced me to go after this set, and he said, "Man, you can do it. I can help you." You know, he's got that voice. He's like, "I can help you. You can do it." And I was like, "Man, I don't know. It's a lot of money." And so I was like, "You know what I'll do? I'll, 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 I'm going to go in. I'm going to check all the Hall of Famers, and I'm going to kind of start picking away at a couple of the Hall of Famers, right?" And so, um, so I started doing that around September, October, um, if I recall, around that time, and just started adding a few here and there. And then and somewhere in there, I got the fever. You guys know me. I've, I'm a set collector by nature. I've got a million PSA, uh, you know, um, 86 Fleer sets in a bunch of different grades. I've, ha I've bought and sold the 10. Um, I've collected other insert sets, the Scoring Kings set in PSA 10. I'm collecting the 2012 Prism set in PSA 10. You know, I collect rainbows. I've got that gene in me, right, where I want to find closure and, and put something together and send pretty pictures to people on Instagram and talk about it. And, um, you know, the chase is part of 
the fun, but also, you know, getting to the finish line and then sharing that with your friends in the hobby is also fun and doing things that you didn't think were possible. So this was my ultimate test and uh, this would be the, the ultimate set if I could put it together. I think there's probably four or five complete PMG red sets in the world. Uh, I know Mr. B's got one. I know Naz has one. Uh, I assume Nat has one. I'm not certain, but I assume if he almost has the green, then he certainly has the red set. Um, so uh, big time collectors out there, a lot bigger collectors than me are the ones with this set. And so I said, I set out on a quest and, uh, and over the, about, you know, from about September or something like that until I'm going to say March. I attacked it. I put everything else in this hobby on hold. I did not buy Jordans. I didn't buy Giannis. I didn't buy Shaq. I didn't buy anything else. I didn't know no more buy raw grade flip games, no more prospecting, no more nothing. All I did was pour money. I, I sold. I was selling at a tremendous clip to build funds to pour into this PMG red set chase thinking to myself, I'm going to put this set together. I'm going to sit on it for 10 years. It's probably going to be a $3 million set, maybe more, I don't know. But that was the idea is that even though this is going to be tough, even though this is going to require a financial commitment beyond belief, um, you know, I had the biggest card in the set. And so the next two biggest cards were, you know, the Kobe and the Tim Duncan. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I, if I moved a bunch of cards, I could get those. And so I decided to try to do it. And so for about six months, I just crushed it, man. And uh, I'll say this, 90% of my sales were done on Instagram. It couldn't have been done without the help of some really amazing collectors out there, including, uh, you know, uh, the Candyman. Uh, Naz helped me a lot. Um, you know, I bought cards from Austria. I bought PMG Reds from Australia. I bought PMG Reds from South America. I bought PMG Reds from Asia. Uh, just taking people's word for it uh, that I trusted, who have vouched for these people who had bought from them before. Um, I got to meet some absolutely incredible collectors all over the world putting this set together. So we roll around to about February or March, a few months ago in 2022. I started to, uh, I was at 93 out of 123, and then I had about 35 duplicates approximately, right? So, uh, but I had 93 unique out of the 123, so I was missing about 30. So the end was actually in sight. Now there's a couple of them out there that are real tough to find, but financially I had taken the plunge. I had the Kobe, I had the Duncan, um, I had, you know, uh, um, I mean, I'll go down the list. I had Alonzo Mourning. I had Patrick Ewing. I had Shaq. I had Olajuwon. I had Grant Hill. I had David Robinson. I had Pippen. I'm, I'm over here on screen share. Uh, here, let me share this with you guys. I had Marbury. I had Drexler. I had Matumbo. I had Kidd. I had Robinson. I had McGrady's rookie. You know, Tim Duncan's rookie. I had the Stockton, Malone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I had done a lot of the, uh, of the dirty work, right? And so the end was actually in sight. And then... Um, I just started getting anxiety. I'll be honest with you, and uh, I know this is going to sound soft or whatever, but um, I started to get uh, not just financial anxiety because it did cause me to get illiquid, right? I've, you know, the, the economy had started to turn. You know, not that I have a lot of crypto, but that wasn't doing great. Everybody who's anybody who's got any money in the stock market knows that sure as heck wasn't doing great. And, um, you know, I started to think, man, I've got a lot of money tied up in these commons, right? These Chris Childs, Lindsey Hunter, you know, when Antoine Walker is a three or $4,000 car, Jamal Mashburn's a $5,000 car, you know, commons, you know, I've got a lot of money tied up in these cards. And at the same time, I'm feeling this anxiety and every single day I am consumed with this set chase, uh, which started out really fun, right? Um, and I made amazing progress. I'm not aware of anybody uh, who has picked up, you know, 130 PMG reds in a six month period. I think I might be the only person on earth that did that. That is one thing I will beat my chest on because I put in a hell of a lot of time and energy to do that. But, um, not only was I feeling a little bit of financial and just mental anxiety and wear and tear about chasing this set and putting everything else on hold, but I started seeing the prices of LeBron cards go down. Cards that I never thought I'd be able to afford again. I started seeing the prices of my Jordan cards that I covet so highly, the 90s parallels and inserts. I started seeing those cards go down. And uh, when I started seeing that, I'm thinking to myself, why am I pouring money into Derek Fisher and, you know, freaking uh, Ronnie Cycley, PMG Reds, when I could be buying pretty doggone impressive, you know, 90s Jordans, inserts and parallels and LeBron rookie cards. And then, you know, some rare LeBron stuff, which is, you know, 50% of what they were, you know, a year ago. And so um, I made an incredibly difficult decision that I would have told you you were crazy 
uh, you know, six months before when I started this set chase uh, to, to liquidate the set. So, um, you know, and that's where uh, I can honestly tell you making friends in the hobby and spreading your, uh, you know, your reach in this hobby, whether it be social media or YouTube or Spotify or Facebook or just, you know, texting and direct messaging. Uh, it really matters because I just happened to stumble upon and I'm not definitely not using anybody's names here. Uh, you're never going to get that out of me because it's a private deal. And if they want to talk about it, they can and they can talk about numbers if they want. I don't really care. Um, that's just not how I do things. But uh, we'll call him whale number one. We'll call him West Coast whale. So uh, I started to develop a relationship with West Coast whale. Uh, and I say whale, W-H-A-L-E, as in gigantic collector with a collection that makes mine look like an anthill. Uh, so, uh, you know, whale reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I had dinner with Nat Turner the other day, you know, he mentioned, you know, the set and he thought red PMGs, you know, were, were, you know, long, great long-term potential growth. I've heard that you've got a partial set. Would you ever consider selling me your duplicates? And I said, well, not really whale one West coast whale, because honestly I need those duplicates and I picked all those duplicates up because I was under the impression that at some point I would need to trade those uh, duplicates in order to get back um, cards that I didn't have. So even if it got to the point where I was having to do a two for one trade to another set collector, I thought maybe that would give me great leverage, you know, to pick up these uh, 30 commons, pretty much 30 commons that I still needed. About my, maybe five stars were in there, but about 25 commons and five stars is what I was missing. And so I was like, I'm really not looking to do that. And, you know, when he kept urging, he's like, look, I'll, I'll be pretty aggressive on price. You know, I'll make it worth your while. And I was like, well, you know what? Let me, you know, it's one of those deals where it's a lot of work to try to comp these cards. It's very difficult to comp these cards. So I did. I went and comped every card. And I told him, I was like, the one thing you're going to learn about me is I'm going to be very straightforward with you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. You may not like it. And we may not get a deal done because of it. But I'm going to tell you exactly what I paid. And then I'm going to tell you that I'm putting a premium on that to compensate me for the amount of time and energy and work and anxiety, you know, that it took to put together 130 cards. And so we, uh, we, we comped all of the duplicates and I sent it to him and he said, look, he's like, are you sure, are you sure you don't want to sell me all of them? Are you sure you don't want to sell me all of the ones I'm thinking about going after this set? I'm learning more about it. He's like, I probably won't do it, but if you were to sell me, you know, the ones that, that, you know, that are in your set and, you know, everything, not, not the duplicates, but all 93 that you have, it's something I would look at. And I was like, well, that's, that's a whole nother deal. And, uh, but ultimately, you know, I went home, I talked to my wife about this and I rarely talked to her about cards and I kept it as general as I could. Cause she's, she's not real helpful because she doesn't understand nineties inserts of parallels, right. Or, or profit margins on PMG res. And I'm not sure anybody's spouse would male or female, but you know, I just kind of wanted to talk through it and tell her where I was and what I did and that I had an opportunity to, um, you know, liquidate the set for a pretty good margin. So even when you're talking about, a, you know, 10 or 15 percent margin, you know, without going into details on the numbers, you're talking about a lot of money. Right. And so 15 percent of a lot is a lot. And so uh, and that was kind of where we were at. And that 10 to 15 percent margin that I tacked on to every card and whale West Coast whale was very interested in listening. And so I uh, talked to the wife about it. And, you know, the one thing that's you know, that I liked about it was uh, taking profits and reinvesting them into the cards that I love the most, which is Jordan's and, uh, you know, which is Jordan's and LeBron's. But the other thing that I liked about it was um, you know, the idea that, you know, my, 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 my anxiety would go away. I, I did not like the idea that I was quitting something. I hate losing. Uh, you know, part of this is winning. It's, it's getting to the finish line and saying, I won. Look at what I did. You know, that's part of it. Not just telling other people saying, ha ha, look at me. Look what I did. You can't do it. It's looking in the mirror and saying, damn, I did something in this hobby that matters, right? This, this would be probably the biggest check mark uh, as far as accomplishments that I've ever put together in the hobby if I had finished this set and put it together. Well, anyway, we ended up brokering a deal. What you're seeing on your screen uh, is a deal and the way it got structured is we did it in three phases. First, we negotiated for the baby cards, right? I said, look, uh, let's do the baby cards first. So every card you see here on yellow, and I've eliminated column in the E section because I don't want to talk about money. Y'all can figure it out if you really care that much about it. But 
Derek Fisher, Derek Harper, Steve Smith, even though he's a great player, I consider him a common. Ronnie Cycli, Vin Baker, you know, Austin Crocher, Vinny Del Negro. He decided he wanted to buy from me every single uh, unique card that I had in the lowest numerical grade. And so you'll see these yellow cards. He, he, at the time, West Coast Whale decided, I want to collect a set, but I don't want any authentic, right, or authentic altered. I don't want any of those. I want all PSA numerically graded and so uh, and, and or BGS numerically graded. So that was the first uh, phase that we had to negotiate. Well, uh, let me tell you, uh, considering that there was a lot of zeros behind this offer, um, you know, I vetted him, he vetted me, he knew who I was, I definitely knew who he was. And, uh, you know, we didn't have any questions about getting paid or, you know, the deal breaking down or anything like that. Uh, from day one, the rapport, the communication, the detail, uh, it was like I met my West Coast twin brother. I mean, it was the, other than the fact that his net worth is probably a thousand times mine. Uh, other than that, we had a tremendous amount in common. And he had a passion for set collecting just like I did and collecting rare stuff, like super rare sets. So uh, we got a deal done for the yellow cards in phase one. And I'm just kind of scrolling through to show you guys. I mean, I've even got Larry Johnson included in there. There's some big ones in there. Carl Malone was in there. Um, so a lot of these cards I'd actually sent off. And I did a video on this. You guys might have seen. I sent 45 raw and or cracked red cards to PSA. And they got those back in like a week's turnaround time. So I converted all these cards to PSA slabs. Most of them, not all of them. Uh, but the yellow is phase one. So we got that deal done. Uh, that deal was real easy. It was a, you know, it was a wire and then it was a couple of PayPal installments because uh, that's the way we negotiated it. And then once that was paid for, the beauty of it is West Coast Whale had a PWCC vault. So I simply clicked a few buttons, you know, on the yellow cards that you see highlighted on your screen. I transferred those over into his vault. They were there the next morning. So that was phase one. Phase two was a little trickier. He finally decided, you know what, in phase two, uh, that's going to be the orange cards that you see on the left. He's like, in phase two, he, he kind of came to the conclusion, this is going to be really hard to put together in only PSA numerical slabs. I'll take a look at your authentic altered. And so, you know, he, he had to look in the mirror and figure out how difficult it was going to be to get an all numerical PSA set together. And he still may get there. But at the time, he's like, give me the PSA authentics and the authentic altered. And so in this, uh, in this next phase, you know, these were the, some of the cards that we could not agree on for price and some of the authentic altered that he didn't think he wanted, but he ended up wanting them. So like Rod Strickland, we were off a little bit on price, but in phase two, we worked it out. After phase one was done, I was flush with cash. And so I was like, I can give a little as long as I don't lose money. And so my margins came down a little because he was going to make it real easy. Do you know how hard it is to liquidate 130 PMG reds? Uh, there's no way I would have done this on Instagram or eBay or even as much as I love PWCC, I was not going to auction 130 PMG reds and, uh, and just eat that, you know, broker fee or, you know, auction house fee or anything like that. I wasn't going to do eBay and eat the 15% and then try to ship, you know, literally multiple five figure cards all over the world. I'm just not doing it. And so the only way I was going to liquidate this set was if somebody like West Coast Whale came along and said, I'll give you X for that. And so that's where we were. So I recognize from, uh, from my perspective, he was a very unique opportunity that was presented to me to find somebody with the financial wherewithal, uh, the commitment, uh, the predictability and dependability and, uh, you know, the, 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 basically the hobby foundation of being a fantastic person to deal with in the hobby. That is what I valued from his perspective. And what he valued from my perspective is where the hell else in the world are you going to find 130 PMG reds? The only people that have it are the people that have the set. And so, uh, from his perspective, this was the only way he could put this set together. So we both, uh, we, we communicated that to each other very early in this game. And that was a crucial um, you know, crossroads that, you know, a threshold that we crossed and we kept reminding each other, Hey, I'm bringing something to the table. And he, and he would say, yeah, I know, but I'm also bringing this to the table. And we were on the same page from the jump, man. And, uh, and so it was an unbelievable deal. We got phase two done for these orange cards. You know, you'll see some PSA authentics. You saw a Rod Strickland PSA three, you know, Todd Day, authentic alter, authentic alter. That's what those oranges are. And so he tacked on all those orange cards. That's maybe, I don't know, like 15 or 20 or something like that. Maybe 12, 15, something like that. I can't remember. I, I've got it on my more detailed spreadsheet with all the numbers that I've cut out. Um, so I could post this for you guys. And so uh, I got a wire for that. Um, so got that paid for. And then that left some monsters. Okay. So um, 
you know, again, we've cleared phase one, we've cleared phase two. Phase three is the green cards. So we're talking about significantly bigger cards. Uh, almost every single one of these cards is a 10,000 plus card. Some are significantly more than 10,000. So you've got a uh, Hall of Famers galore. You've got the Alonzo Morning 8.5, the Patrick Ewing 8.5, the Shaq PSA 5. That was a real sticking point. Uh, he's, he's a big Shaq collector and a big Shaq fan. I am, uh, that's the centerpiece of my Shaq PC. Uh, he's the only person in the world I would have sold this to. Uh, I can honestly say I was in no way, shape, or form ever considering selling that Shaq card. Um, we came to terms on a very fair number. I didn't make uh, the margin that I would have liked on the Shaq, but at the same time, I care about this guy and I want him to get there. I want him to finish this set. And so uh, I moved the Shaq for a, a relatively good margin just because I bought the Shaq so early in the game. I was at a great price point and a great uh, you know, entry point on that Shaq PSA 5. The Akeem Olajuwon BGS 8, the Grant Hill BGS 7, uh, David Robinson BGS 8.5, Pippen BGS 8, Marbury BGS 8, Clyde Drexler BGS 8.5. Matumbo BGS 7.5, Jason Kidd and Glenn Robinson. And Glenn Robinson's highlighted, and y'all are laughing. You're like, well, Glenn Robinson, the big dog, doesn't fit in with all these other guys. That's a five-figure card, fellas. For those of you who don't know, that is one of the more rare and more difficult to obtain uh, cards in the 97 PMG red set. If it's not the Jeff Malone, uh, I mean, if it's not the Johnny Moore of the PMG red set, it's the Jeff Malone of the PMG red set. Okay. Does that make sense to you? 86 Fleer collectors out there. I may have lost some people right there, but those green cards were phase three. So, uh, we got that done. And then, you know, we did come to terms. That was, um, West coast whale said, look, I want to get a deal in place. I want them. Uh, I'll be aggressive on price. I need time. I need 90 days on this. I'll, I'll give you some cash when we go to the national and, and I see you. And sure enough, we went to the national. And if you watch my national video, he, he dropped 40 grand cash on me at the national, which was just an installment, you know, for the greens, uh, for the green highlighted cards. But uh, uh, so, you know, he paid me installment, installment, installment. Well, finally, about, about, I guess, maybe two days ago, you know, I'm not sure when y'all will be watching this video, but it's August 12th, 2022. So a couple days ago, you know, he finally made his last installment and it was kind of bittersweet, you know, and we sent a text message to each other and, uh, you know, the text message I sent him is now what, what do you want to buy from me now? You know, uh, but he's a little bit distracted right now. It's, ironically, he's actually started to dip his uh, toes in the Jordan market. So this may not be the end of my transactions with West Coast Whale. We'll see. But, um, you know, it was funny and it was kind of bittersweet that we're not going to be, you know, texting each other every day. Hey, I sent a wire. Hey, I got it. Okay, here's the updated spreadsheet. Here's the balance. You know, every time he would send me a wire or a PayPal installment, every single time I would update my spreadsheet, update my ledger with the exact price he's paid. Then went and I would transfer, you know, a, a quantity of cards that we had agreed to buy and sell commensurate to the amount of that installment. And then I would just plug the key in, put it into PWCC and boom, they would move from my vault to his vault. And it was seamless. And, uh, and again, I know I sound like a hype beast for PWCC. This deal doesn't go down like this without us both being PWCC vault members. I don't know how many times I can stress that. There is no way this deal would have worked if he wasn't a PWCC vault member. That was a um, prerequisite to this working because I did not want to request these cards be shipped to me or be shipped directly from there to him. Uh, they never left PWCC's vault. They just got walked from his vault to my vault. I mean, from my vault to his vault. I never touched them. There was no insurance concerns. There was no shipping concerns. There was no frightening horror stories of, you know, FedEx employees, you know, ripping open boxes, stealing the contents and then resealing them like we've seen lately. Uh, so just, just being able to have that peace of mind and knowing if I click this button and I say ownership transfer in PWCC and I'll do a tutorial on it one day to show you guys how simple and easy it is. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't think either one of us would have been nearly as comfortable. It would have been an anxiety ridden situation uh, because that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of PMGs. So I think it ended up being 78 PMGs or maybe 80 or something like that. That's for West Coast Whale. Well, after that transaction concluded, and this came completely out of the blue, believe it or not, there is another collector in Baton Rouge that deals in a very, very, very high level. Uh, I know that's hard to believe, but uh, this guy is a very aggressive collector as well. He's local. He came to my office and said, hey, how many PMGs do you have left? And I was like, what are you talking about? You've never once asked me about them, looked at them, talked about them. He's like, I watched your video on your channel. 
you know, um, I don't watch all your videos, but I saw your video about the PMGs. He's like, I'm thinking about going after the set. And I was like, dude, are you nuts? I was like, you've got to be crazy. And, uh, and he is crazy. He's one of my best friends in the hobby and I love him to death. And, uh, uh, we talk all the time. We talk daily. Uh, and he's a fantastic, uh, he's a fantastic friend in the hobby. And it's great to have somebody locally that, that, you know, collects on us, you know, in a similar pattern to me. He's also nuts. He's also aggressive. He's also, uh, throws caution to the wind. And when he wants something, he just goes after it in the hobby, you know? So, uh, he came in my office and he's like, show me the list. And I showed him the list and, uh, and I showed him my prices and it was the same prices that I had quoted uh, West Coast Whale for these additional duplicates. I said, hey, West Coast Whale, if you want these additional duplicates for trade bait, let me know. And I was like, if not, you know, these are my prices. If not, I'm going to move these to my local guy. You know, we're going to call him, you know, Cajun Whale. Okay. Or we'll call him, uh, you know, South Coast Whale. Okay. So South Coast Whale comes in my office. We look at it. And I think there was 29 on this list, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so there's 29 more on this list. And uh, South Coast Whale says, I'll take them. And so just like that, and again, y'all can do the math. These are some big cards. I mean, we're talking about a Charles Barkley BGS 7.5. Uh, we've got the highest graded Ronnie Cycley card in the world. The highest graded Ronnie Cycley, uh, you know, PSA 7. Um, what else do we have on here? We got a Sabonis PSA 6. That's a huge card, guys. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, and it's a color match. It's just a huge card. Uh, we've got... Uh, a Grant Hill BGS 7.5, five-figure card. We've got Jermaine O'Neal and Keith Van Horn and, and another Larry Johnson. I had two of those, so that's no joke. We've got a huge Kevin Garnett BGS 8. Um, we got the Leitner PSA Authentic. That's a tough one. Um, so big card. The Mark Jackson's no joke right there either. Uh, these are some big cards, and they add up when you buy 29 of them. And so he didn't bat an eye. He said, Brian, I trust you. Um, you know, and I told him, I, was, I told him the same thing I told West Coast Whale. I said, these are my prices. Here's what I paid. This is me tacking a margin on to compensate fee, me for my time, my anxiety, and the misery that I put my wife through where she was also worried about, hey, are you spending too much money? What the hell are you doing? Why don't I ever see you? And why, you know, why are you always talking to me about this? It's all like a different language. So, uh, so South Coast, uh, and I struck a deal, uh, in principle. So these cards are now allotted to him. Uh, it's going to be transacted in the same way. It's going to be three installments over a 90 day period, um, uh, with the first installment coming tomorrow, uh, in the form of a wire. And, um, yeah, he's another guy, you know, what I, what I'm trying to get at is I can't stress enough that who, you know, in the hobby, and it's just like this in the business world, I'm sure. And a lot of where you guys live, but who, you know, in the hobby is crucial. Just knowing the people that I know and, um, getting to know some of the real, uh, just absolute class acts in this hobby is just crucial. Like this, this I moved a hundred and I don't do the math, 125 or something like that, somewhere around there, PMG Reds in, you know, 60 days. Uh, it's just unheard of, and it was easy and seamless. And uh, I left this fact out as well. South Coast Whale also has a PWCC vault. Yes, there's another person in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who uses the PWCC vault. And so it's the same deal. As I get an installment, I'll take about a third of the value of these cards, I'll plug his key in. I'll request an ownership transfer. Boom. My guys at PWCC transfer the cards over from my account uh, into his account. It's just that simple. Uh, so I know I sound like a walking billboard for PWCC, and I know everybody thinks I get paid by those dudes. I don't get paid by anybody. I didn't even click the monetization button on my channel because I don't want you guys to have to watch commercials uh, so I can make 50 bucks a month. You know, I don't give a dang about that. I, I want y'all to watch the channel. And, uh, and I know I don't like watching commercials in the middle of my content, so I assume you guys wouldn't either. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if it would be like that forever, but for now, I don't want y'all watching commercials. I want you watching my content. And so, uh, you know, so again, I don't get paid by PWCC. I don't get paid by Chris and them at Card Ladder. Uh, you know, I've had offers from other people to make money doing this, but... Again, that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to share my hobby story with you. I've got a lot of messages. I thought maybe y'all would like this stuff. And uh, so, so I've got this deal in place with, uh, with uh, South Coast Whale here for these 29 that are left over. So that deal is going to get consummated. So that builds up a nice little war chest of funds so I can do what I truly love, which is you guys by now should know exactly what I'm about to say. 
by 90s Jordan inserts of parallels, right? And then a little sprinkling of LeBron because his stuff has dropped too much. And I'm really enjoying the prices that I'm seeing on some of these LeBron cards. So I'm definitely in the bidding for some big LeBron cards. And I'm reinvesting some of this PMG money um, into LeBron and Jordan without question. I am. Uh, and then I'm also going to put a little bit of this aside because just like everybody else in the country, there's a little bit of fear, a little bit of trepidation right now uh, with the economy, with the current uh, I'm not going to get political, but the current political climate, um, you know, war, one, you know, one existing war, one potential additional war, you know, over in Asia that worries me, uh, you know, crypto looks to be bouncing back, which is great for the world. And it's great for the hobby as much as people like to bash it. It's important to the hobby. Uh, you don't want people's net worth to dwindle to nothing, you know, in a, in 120 days, like it has with crypto, the market seems to be rebounding. I don't know if this is just a temporary you know blip where it's gonna you know trickle back up and then it's gonna go down again i don't know i'm not a macro economist but um you know that's just i want to put some money to the side just so i stay liquid and so i can be flexible because i do have a wife and seven kids as well by the way it's not just you know every dollar can't go to jordan i gotta pay a lot of bills i'm buying cars because my kids keep wrecking them. It's like, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir with some of you other parents out there with teenage drivers and, and having to pay auto insurance in Louisiana. Look it up. It's absurd. Uh, it's double whatever your state is. Trust me, unless you live in Mississippi uh, or Michigan for some reason. But uh, anyway, so that was the consummated deal with uh, South Coast Whale. So now I've sold, you know, 120 plus PMG Reds. I bought and sold in nine months about 125, 130 PMG red. So let me show you what I've got left and what's for sale. So uh, again, this is not a sales pitch, but I just wanted you guys to know that's all I have left right there. I've got Walt Williams, which I know y'all aren't gonna believe this, but look at this. That's a BGS 9.5 right there, okay? Uh, let me highlight it for you. That is a uh, pop one, obviously. There's only been three PMG reds ever for any of the 123 players ever graded a BGS 9.5. My Walt the Wizard Williams, right? One of the Maryland greats uh, and an NBA journeyman, Walt the Wizard Williams. And then two Jordan BGS 9.5s, which are seven figure cards. I don't care what anybody says. That card's probably going to push seven figures if we see a 9.5 red Jordan. I'm just guessing. It's a pop two. Uh, so my Walt Williams is the third BGS 9.5 out there. I don't think it'll get seven figures, but I'm asking 4,500 for God's sakes. It's almost like I'm giving it away. Uh, and then you've got the Tracy McGrady PSA 6. I'm asking 21.5. Go check the comps. Uh, I think the last PSA 5 sold for around 18,000 or something like that. Uh, so reasonably priced there. And then a Malik Rose. I actually had three Malik Roses. So I sold one to West Coast Whale. I sold one to South Coast Whale. And then I've got this last PSA Authentic for two grand. And then uh, I had three Hersey Hawkins as well. Sold one to West Coast, sold one to South Coast. And then I've got this last one here. And so uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for for those four cards. If anybody's interested, they are for sale. Just message me. I've sold tons of cards from people just watching my videos and asking if I have this or if I have that. Whatever. You know, I'm an open book. I'm Cajun Cardboard on Instagram and Facebook. Um, or you can comment below if you're interested or whatever. I don't care. I mean, if I hold them, I hold them. I don't really care about that either because, um, you know, I'm not in a hurry to move those cards. PMG Reds are pretty liquid cards. So I'm happy to hold them as long as I need to. But those are my prices. Those are actually non-negotiable. So if you're a PMG Red set collector and any of those three cards help you, or if maybe you're a Tracy McGregor, PC guy, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to, um, to sell a card to you, but I will go ahead and save you the time. Do not offer me anything less than that because I'm just not looking to, to go down on those prices because it took so much work to put those cards in uh, my collection in the first place. So <clears throat> those are the four that I have for sale. And here's a picture of them if y'all want to see it. So here's the, uh, the, one, the one of one, the big one, right? This is your uh, red PMG. And look at those edges, man. So those of you who are familiar with PMGs, the edges are always the concern. Huge flaking on the edges. Edges, and there are none the corners get a nine I think because of this bottom left corner I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen oh my god have I not been sharing oh crap sorry here's my sheet guys I'm sorry about that I had you up with my big fat face on the screen but uh, there's the four cards that I have for sale sorry take a screenshot I screwed that up and then here they are and this is the Walt Williams I was telling you about that bottom left corner is an issue right you can see a little whitening on this high def image and that's why the corners got a nine but the other three are 9.5 and there's no chipping at all on any of those edges and so here's another one with Walt on the back and look at those edges man it's immaculate card number 75 out of 100 uh, as I explained there's actually 90 because 10 of the 100 are greens um, so that's card number one that Walt Williams as you can see BGS pop one none graded high we talked about it and then uh, the next one is 
PSA 4 Hersey Hawkins. And so look at this left edge. That's what most edges look like, right? And that's why most uh, PMG Reds are PSA 5, 6. You know, there's about as many 4s as 7s. 5 and 6 PSA is kind of that, you know, sweet spot. That's where most of the PMG Reds end up falling. Here's what the back of that one looks like. Pretty cool card. Really good player, man. Really, really good player. Great player in college at the University of Bradley. Um, and then right below that, we've got our uh, Malik Rose, Drexel Great. He was a Drexel Dragon. Uh, this card's really banged up, but it is just a graded authentic, but it's real, right? And so that's one of those deals like with this set, you can't be a grade snob, which has uh, really been awesome for me because I was a grade snob. So this has desensitized me and it's helped me to kind of appreciate the card more than the number that's on the slab. Uh, and so that's my Malik Rose slabbed authentic. The back actually looks really good. Card number 13 out of 100. And then the last of the four cards that are for sale is this uh, monster here. This is a Tracy McGrady. And I think this is a really good looking six. Uh, really good on the top half of the card. A tiny bit of whitening over there on the left and a little bit of touch up here in the top left. And then the bottom left is really kind of where the trouble is, if you guys can see down there. But look, for a, for a PMG Red, that's graded appropriately. That's where the card belongs. And so I actually had two of those. Um, West Coast Whale didn't need it for some reason. He already had it or something. And so I sold one to South Coast Whale. And so this is the PSA 6 that I have left over. Uh, just a really good looking card with the young Tracy McGrady. Who would have known what kind of absolute monster he would have become? And guys, if you'll notice, this is card 100 out of 100, which is pretty dang cool, if you ask me. So uh, PSA 6 right there. 21.5 is what I'm asking for that card. If you're one of those 1 out of 100 guys or jersey number guys or 100 out of 100 that loves that, that's 100 out of 100. So that's about as cool as it gets if you're a Tracy McGrady collector, one of his best rookie cards in existence without question. So uh, back to the list. And so that leaves three PMG Reds in my collection that are not for sale. And so uh, here they are. Uh, these are the big boys, right? These are the ones that don't go anywhere. Uh, first and foremost is the Jordan, right? Jordan should always be first. Um, probably a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't want to bash my own card, and it, to be honest with you, it doesn't freaking matter to me because it's Michael Jordan, but probably a little bit overgraded on edges. I would say maybe six and a half or seven edges, but this one got a seven and a half, which gave it an eight overall. The other subgrades are absolutely phenomenal, centering, you know, the corners and then the surface. So there's, the, there's my Jordan. It's card number 73 out of 100. Uh, man, if there was a one card I would like, it'd be the 23 out of 100 because I know that would carry a premium. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, so the Jordan's card number one. Card number two is this TD rookie card. One of Tim Duncan's best rookie cards. So you've got, you know, essential credentials, rubies. Um, you know, you've got this uh, Metal Universe PMG Red and then you've got the PMG Green. So I think I've just named, you know, the Rushmore of Duncan rookie cards. Um, this one's really cool. You know, it's got the kind of weird red glow over the ball. He's in his first practice uniform, which is cool. But this is young Tim Duncan right here. It's also a BGS 8. As expected, corner, uh, edges is the problem with this card as well. This card is not for sale um, simply because there was a horrible comp on the last golden auction. It sold for like 80-something, 80 80-something, 80 and the last golden sold for like 40-something. And I don't know what happened or how it slipped through the cracks, but somebody stole that card. I assure you, I am not moving this card for less than I bought it for. That's card number uh, 88 out of 100. And then um, the last card is the Kobe that you guys know very well, uh, which is the card that I brought to the National and it was uh, deemed authentic altered. I cracked it out of the BGS case, put it in this red case, and it was money well spent. Uh, this is the card Nat took out of my hands and ran over to the PSA booth to get re-slabbed. And uh, just, man, just one of Kobe's greatest cards in the world. Uh, truly an awesome card. And it's got like the least amount of weird freaky crap going on in the background. It's actually just Kobe with a red background. There's no mechanical claws or weird stuff like that like you see on a lot of these PMG red cards. And then uh, this card's number 8 out of 100. No, I'm just kidding. It's card number uh, 82 out of 100. Ooh, 81 would have been something, right? So card number 82 out of 100. Uh, maybe if Kobe could have made one more free throw that night. But anyway, that is it, guys. Uh, so those are the three that are never, well, they're not for sale. These are the four that are for sale. Uh, here is the list of the cards that I sold to South Coast Whale. And then here's the list of the cards in three phases. And then such a smooth transaction for such a humongous 
humongous game-changing number uh, that I sold to the West Coast Whale. So let me know what you think, guys. If you've got any questions about how this deal went down, don't ask me anything about numbers because I'm just not doing it. It's just not how I do stuff. Um, and it, like I said, you guys can do backwards math and kind of figure out what happened here. But, um, you know, let me know if you got any questions about how it went down or things that, that maybe I overlooked or things that you don't agree with or I wouldn't have sold this or just let me know generally what you think. I just wanted to show you guys the art of, uh, of how a massive deal, in, t in fact, two massive deals uh, can take place. And then really I wanted to share uh, my thoughts with you guys about how set collecting can be a blessing and a curse. Um, first of all, the two most lucrative sales that I've ever made in this hobby have been my both sets, right? So the 86 Fleer set and then this PMG Red set. And uh, so for people out there that think set collectors can't be investors, that's not true. Uh, set collecting can be incredibly lucrative. I am uh, living proof of it, and there's many other people out there who are, are also living proof of it. So don't think for a second when you're collecting a set that you're throwing your money away because uh, if the time comes where the anxiety overcomes you or you just get tired of it and you just need a new spark and you want to buy different cards, you know, sometimes you can flip those sets for very good numbers and good margins, and then you can reinvest that money in the hobby and and uh and do great things and start all over again and that's what's beautiful about this hobby it's like i'm taking the money out of cards with a little bit of profit i'm putting the money right back into different cards that i want now like i wanted these cards then i want different cards now and that's okay and that's okay for a lot of people who are upside down on their cards if you don't like the cards don't hang on to them too long even if you're at a loss like i'm dealing with that right now with LeBron Chromes. I think I'm about to just move the damn LeBron Chromes, even though they're down that much, and then put it into a LeBron rookie card that I really care about. Uh, you know, even if it's a 20 for one deal, it might be worth looking at. Uh, so uh, set collecting can be very rewarding, but also I do want to warn you, set collecting can drive you to financial ruin and, uh, and cause you to be very illiquid. And I experienced that because, you know, I was set collecting at about the highest level you can imagine. I mean, there's a couple things that are more expensive than PMG Reds, like the greens, or maybe like 2012 Gold Prism, probably not quite as expensive, but close to it. Um, so, uh, you know, anyway, that's just my story. I thought you guys would love that story. Uh, sorry, I can't go into more details about the numbers. I normally share stuff like that, but when it's big numbers, I don't feel comfortable doing it. So, uh, but I'll share numbers with you on little stuff, you know, that I send to PSA on buy raw grade flip stuff and you investor guys and guys that crave that, you know, margin and spreadsheets and numbers, you nerdy math people like me. Uh, I'll have some more of those videos for you because I got some cards coming back from PSA uh, relatively soon. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments top to bottom about the whole video. Is it a waste of your time? I'm sorry if it was. I just wanted to get it out because it was such a fun time in my collecting life. Um, but you know, the next the next 90 to 120 days is gonna be just as fun because I'm reinvesting the money in some really cool stuff, which I'm gonna share with you guys in some of these mail days. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And, uh, and I've always kind of just told you guys, I'll never tell anybody what to buy or what to do. I'm just not like that. That's just not my guy. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a card, uh, you know, guru who tells people what to do with their money it's your money and i don't know what you like buy what you like uh, but i know that sometimes people like hearing about other people's stories and how they got from a to b and uh, i like to share with you guys in great detail how i got from a to b and how deals like this get done um, you know with the help of the pwcc vault and with the help of two just absolutely first class just super professional um, hobbyists, uh, buyers that, that made this deal uh, as seamless as possible for a deal of this magnitude. It was just uh, invaluable. And, uh, and I did want to also give a special thank you to, uh, I, I can't stress enough how much um, Naz, um, you know, there's a couple of guys on Instagram. You guys know who you are. A couple of you guys really educated me, uh, brought me along. You brokered deals for me uh, and asked nothing in return. Um, you know, I don't want you to think that I had the intention of flipping all this stuff from the beginning because that is not the case. Uh, anybody I bought any of these cards from, uh, and that was not the case. I wanted to run this thing through and go 123 out of 123. And, uh, and it just got to the point where it didn't make sense for me mentally or financially. And um, I had to make some changes. So that's where we are now. But uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of those uh, guys on Instagram. And they know who they are, who helped me along the way, pick up these cards and, uh, and ask absolutely nothing in return. Right, there, are, there are middlemen and brokers who broker deals for free. And I'm trying to repay those favors and uh, do the same kind of thing for people all over the hobby. I love doing it. I love helping people um, get from A to B and accomplish their goals. 
in the hobby and I don't need to get paid for that. This is not why I do this. Um, you know, I have a job and I have a, some other ways to make money. So this is, that sounded mysterious. So this is, uh, this is more about fun and doing what it is that we love. So anyway, enough rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's my PMG Red story and uh, I'm sticking to it. Let me know what you guys think. Keep collecting, stay positive in the hobby and peace.